a liaison between uh, the United Nations Environment Program and the whole Children and Youth Fraternity. And I was uh, the youngest and the only minor to ever hold that position. So even there, it was like this whole report breaking thing where no child had ever held that position. But I came into that based on my works. Hi, welcome to the Business Talk Library. I'm your host, Terrell Turner. And today I have another great guest on because, you know, one of the things that I find to be very, very interesting is that, you know, we spend so much time in entrepreneurship and, and talking about business on this show. And, you know, it is great to talk about, you know, entrepreneurship and building businesses. But one of the things that I also like to highlight are, you know, what, what are those organizations that are making an impact? Because it's not all about just starting a business to make the most money in the world but it's what's the impact that we are making you know when we think about the communities the the environment the world around us the people around us what impact are we making on those lives so i wanted to invite a wonderful guest that is doing amazing work making a huge global impact miss kahekesha bashu so welcome to the show thank you so much great to be here today Absolutely, absolutely. Now, before we jump into your, you know, the, the awesome business that you are, the awesome organization that you developed with Green Hope, tell us what was your background before, you know, starting this organization? Sure. So I come from a family where empathy has always been a part of our lives. And I've seen my parents go out early in the morning, every morning of every weekend to distribute food, clothes to those in need. And I always accompanied them. And, you know, segregation of our waste, uh, composting them, recycling, upcycling, they were also part of our daily lives. And I, not just my parents, I've seen my grandmother as well grow organic vegetables on her terrace. So I always believed that protecting the planet Helping the community is just part of our daily lives. But at the age of seven, I saw the image of a dead bird with its belly full of plastic. And that was when I knew that that was not normal. And I had to do something about it. And that gave me sleepless nights. I could not stop thinking about the bird's agony as it died. And it was also around this time that I attended a lecture by environmentalist Robert Swan and his words, the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it, really resonated with me. And that was when I decided that I would start my, uh, my sustainability journey on my eighth birthday. And my birthday is also World Environment Day, 5th June. So I thought that I was uh, predestined <laughs> to become an eco warrior. Uh, but honestly, it was my passion for uh, bringing about change and knowing that I had to be the first one to take that extra step that really propelled me to take that uh, action and start my journey. And I started talking about uh, recycling, uh, not using plastic bags uh, to my friends at school. And even outside of that, I started going around to my neighborhood shops, restaurants, beauty salons, uh, asking them to move towards more sustainable practices. And while I did that, I realized that, you know, what I thought of as normal, that's protecting the planet or helping others, that's not normal for everyone else. And I decided to make that a part of everyone's life. And that was why I planted that first tree on my birthday as well. And my mom always told me that God sends us to this world with a mission. And I really believed that that was my mission to be able to become that uh, sustainability advocate. And yeah, that was how I started out. And four years later, uh, actually three years later, I was invited to speak at my first United Nations conference. How they caught hold of me, I don't know, but they saw my <laughs> grand level work. Um, but yeah, and uh, after that, the following year uh, in 2012, I founded Green Hope Foundation because 
I realized that there was a tremendous uh, lack of inclusivity of children in the sustainable development process. So that's how my organization came about. Wow, that is an amazing journey. You know, that was one of the things that stood out to me when I saw a video that was on your profile on LinkedIn is where, you know, you, you talked about, you know, the personal responsibility of getting involved with it and how you said that, you know, the answer is not coming from, you know, some, you know, some distant person that's just going to come in and save it is we have to personally get involved with it. And, and that was something I thought was amazing because sometimes when you, when I hear different people speak on the topic, they're talking about what other people can do to fix the problem, but, you know, bringing it home, I, I think is amazing. Um, now, one of the things that I'm interested in is because there are a lot of people who are interested in, you know, getting involved with a mission or starting an organization about a mission. Um, what was that process like for you in actually just building the organization around the mission that you were so passionate about? Yeah, so I decided, once I decided that I start my organization, I came home and uh, asked five of my friends whom I knew were passionate to join us. And I kind of just went from there. And I still remember that we had our first activities like on the ground, we uh, decided that we would be able to, uh, the best way to reach out to children and youth, uh, apart from doing ground level actions was through our uh, devising a whole new con concept called sustainability academies, which where we would have peer to peer uh, communication and learning. So that was how we kind of started out. And I guess that it's been a very exciting uh, journey with, but with a lot of hurdles. What we always knew is that, you know, we were always going to have naysayers if we do good work. So we faced challenges in the forms of, and personally, uh, as well as cyberbullying, death threats, stalking, threats of physical abuse. And all of that happened, like, you know, by the I started when I was nine. So even before I started uh, Green Hope. So for me, building an organization was firstly to provide a safe space for everyone. And uh, moving from that to ensuring that, you know, we would be able to implement our mission in all parts uh, of the world. And specific to uh, Green Hope, when I was 12, I was also elected as Global Coordinator of the United Nations Environment Program, Children and Youth. So that enabled me to uh, reach out to so many children and youth across the world. And that was also how Green Hope started to go uh, global because I started Green Hope with the sole mission of creating a positive impact on the ground in terms of sustainability. And becoming a global coordinator actually enabled me to realize that, you know, there are other places where I can also uh, do my good work and help people out. And it kind of just went from there. So, uh, and it's continued this way for the last eight years. And I would say that, you know, our positivity, our hard work, our honesty, and our passion for our work definitely helped us to overcome uh, those hurdles, which are, which we know are always going to be there, but we just have to like move uh, past them through our work. So yeah, it's been an amazing journey so far. Wow. I mean, and that, that speaks to, you know, I said incredible leadership on, on your part of, you know, of being, you know, taking on such a big mission and having to work through, I mean, I, I couldn't imagine having to deal with, you know, death threats and having to deal with the, all, all the bullying and all, all the, you know, the threats to your safety for doing something that is helping other people. Um, and so, I mean, that, that is uh, hats off to you, amazing leadership on your part for still being able to keep your team inspired to keep going and, and to keep pursuing it. Um, so I'm curious um, with, you know, the, the position that you said that you were, you were in with the UN, you know, what did that position entail? So I was a liaison between uh, the United Nations Environment Program and the whole children and youth fraternity. And I was uh, the youngest and the only minor to ever hold that position. So even there, it was like this whole record breaking thing where 
no child had ever held that position, but I came into that based on my work. So for me, I brought to the table ground level work and that coupled with the knowledge that I gained from holding that position in terms of policymaking at the highest level really helped to ensure that children and youth actually had a voice at the table and that children specifically were not left behind when we were talking about just you know young people so really it was uh, my whole job was to you know act as that liaison but it really ensured that you know the UNEP and children and youth had a much better and closer relationship where we could all work together uh, towards that common goal. Awesome, awesome. Now, when we talk about, you know, Green Hope, I mean, when, when people are looking at the Green Hope Foundation, you know, what are all like the, the, the services, the programs that they do? Um, what can people expect to find when they look at Green Hope? So we have a very broad range of activities. We currently have chapters in 16 countries and an outreach to 25 with over 130,000 uh, people uh, globally. And we work on the implementation of all of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, 17 of them, and of course are very broad. And because we work in different parts of the world, our work is also extremely localized and therefore it's not just focusing on one uh, aspect of sustainability or just the environment or society, it's everything basically. So on one hand, we've planted uh, more than 140,000 trees globally, over 5,000 mangroves, cleaned up over 165 beaches, communities, parks, ravines. Uh, we've recycled over 200,000 kilos of waste. We work extensively on turtle conservation, both sea and river turtles. On the societal side, we, especially during this pandemic, we've been well, focusing a lot on health and sanitation on uh, people in the most marginalized communities. So we've been distributing uh, masks, soaps, gloves, uh, conducting workshops for women in, and girls in Bangladesh on uh, protection from sexual assault. Uh, we've also been working on the creation of circular economies by giving uh, po sustainable poultry, sustainable fish, and organic seeds to uh, women in the villages of Bangladesh, which is one of our most active chapters uh, during this pandemic so that they can really rebuild better towards a circular economy. And uh, at Green Hope, our specific focus is on uh, empowering those in the most marginalized communities. So we work with children and youth and women in uh, the Syrian refugee camps, Rohingya refugee camps, children of prisoners in Kenya and Nepal, uh, HIV positive children in Nepal, uh, children in orphanages in Bangladesh, Suriname, Indonesia. So those who are usually left behind in the whole sustainable development process and bringing their voices to the forefront. And at the same time, we work with uh, children in urban areas to ensure that sustainability education becomes the norm. And we do all of this using education for sustainable development as a transformative tool. So providing that education both through our sustainability academies and using really creative ways like music, art, dance, drama, and sport, and even fashion and writing so that you know, we're able to circumvent language barriers, social strictures, and at the same time, educating them through ground level initiatives so that they can actually have that hands-on exposure and understand what is going on in the world around them and then even around them in their local communities because a lot of children and you don't know about that so trying to really get them to become global citizens whose work is driven by empathy so in short that is what green hope does Wow, that is a lot. That is a lot to manage. Now, where can people find you guys online or on social media to see all the great things that you're up to? Sure. So people can uh, register on our website if they want to join. Uh, that's renofoundation.com. They can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram if they just type in Green Hope Foundation. And yeah, we're literally just a click away. And especially <laughs> during this pandemic, we're like online 24 seven due to all the different time zones that we work in. So yeah, we are always um, looking forward to engaging with 
more passionate people, whether it's on the ground or especially during these times online. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Now I'm curious, how do you manage, you know, leading an organization? I mean, that's in 16 different countries. I mean, you guys have a reach in, you know, an additional 25. How do you manage it all? I think my passion really uh, enables me to keep going and I love what I do. So there's always that element of wanting to do more. So I achieve something, I complete a project and then I'm always like, okay, what do I do next? And whom do I help next? And uh, how do we make a greater impact? So yeah, I think it's definitely my passion that enables me to be able to do everything and ensure that, you know, we're able to do everything with the same amount of success. And apart from passion, as I mentioned earlier, hard work, honesty, and optimism, these have also played very important roles. And uh, honestly, I work like uh, 10 times harder than any of my peers to ensure that, uh, you know, I maintain excellent grades and at the same time I'm able to do my work uh, and actually ensure that they're all intermingled as well. So yes, it requires a lot of hard work and, so, and like a lot of sleepless nights too, but <laughs> I'd say that you know the outcome is uh, very, very fruitful and it's what makes me happy. Awesome. Awesome. Well, before we wrap up, you know, one of the last questions I'd like to ask, I mean, you know, there are other people out there that are passionate about, you know, a, a mission, they're passionate about, you know, developing an organization, what would be two pieces of advice that you would give to someone who's passionate about a topic or passionate about a subject, and they want to start an organization around that? Yeah, I think it's always important to remember that whatever comes from the heart stays. So again, being empathetic, honest, hardworking in whatever you do is really, really important. And also to remember that, you know, it's not about just starting an organization. You need to practice what you preach, start at home and ensure that you are able to be a role model for the people you want to engage. And then when, if that is your goal to be able to start an organization, you're able to, you know, act as a good leader where people are able to emulate what you're doing and see you as that positive role model. And the other thing is that, you know, don't do it for fame or awards or media coverage. Do it because you want to help others. And, you know, that journey, the honest journey, it's not going to be a bed of roses, but just don't give up. And at the end of the day, your journey is probably going to be much longer than someone who does it through the quick fix, but it is also much more fruitful. And it's also the end goal is to help uh, the world, help our community, help our planet. And I think that, you know, it just do it because you want to do it, not because it's for something else or doing it for someone else. Awesome. Kaheka John, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for all the great work that you're doing. Um, it's been a pleasure having you on the show to hear your story and to share it with our audience and our community. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Business Talk Library. If you like our content, be sure to follow us on social media. And if you want to see more of our exclusive content, you can subscribe and become a member on patreon.com forward slash business talk library. Hey, the business talk library is the place where business makes sense.